Can I ask you a question? Um, was David poor? King David, was he poor? Okay. Was Solomon poor? Isaac, was he poor? Okay. If you look at um, Forbes magazine that came out um, last uh, two weeks ago, it had a list of billionaires and millionaires in the world. And they also try to resort into categories of religion. And Christians came bottom of the list. So it then dawned on me that if my father owns the earth, I should be a billionaire. Yeah. Don't you think? Yeah. Pastors, some pastors lied to us that if you talk about money, you're going to hell. Well, I've got news for those pastors. It's the very same pastor that said, put your tithe when you go into your seventh job. Okay, that's number one. I've got a lot of statistics for you. I'll do the introduction to myself a bit as well. Let's talk The Financial Times. Um, <clears throat> they looked at those in remunerated work and those who run a business. And the, the Office for National Statistics say that if you are in employment, your chance of being a millionaire or a millionaire is zero, wait for this, zero point zero two percent less than one percent so if you're in a nine to five job and you're going to or going on your knees and say lord bless you you're doing the very same thing that moses did to god remember when moses when god sent him an errand he raised all kind of claims and counterclaims and defenses from i cannot speak with advocacy and clarity to they would not believe me. And finally, God had to say, well, that freaking thing in your hand that looks like a stick, that's, that's all I need to show my power. So what God is saying is that we all have ability. We, have, we all have a special gift. Every one of us. Nobody is special. From every one of us, God gives us the same amount of different gift. You have to find your gift and show it to the world. The world won't come to you, you have to go to the world. Mm. My name is Gopi Nogri. I just have a round of applause now. Yeah. I've got more. By the time I finish today, I hope that I'm going to make some of you a seven figure in companion. And how many people here are mothers? How many people have children like me? Most people, right, okay, cool. Um, and so out of the single people, there could be people who have decided to have a single life, like St. Paul. There could be people who've not got married yet. Um, and there could be people who have been married and have had, you know, a bad experience um, or some sort of tragedy. So um, the single people here, obviously this talk is about marriage and is about sex as well. Um, but as a single person, you're here to learn from mistakes in the past and also to inform your future, which we are as many people as well, to learn from our mistakes and inform our future. Um, but you're also here to remind us of how much we have as my people. Because as a married person, we can sometimes take our husbands for granted, don't we? Yeah. yeah. And so um, actually single people can remind us what gift marriage is and what a blessing it is to have a husband. Um, I read on Instagram this morning, um, be grateful for what you have before it becomes what you had. Mm. Yeah, and sometimes we just take things for granted and it's not until actually a tragedy happens or until something goes wrong that we realize actually we should have treasured that in the moment, we should have treasured it when we had it. And so we need to try and enjoy Enjoy now, enjoy the present, enjoy what we have. Yeah? Josie, are you able to sit there? Oh, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> <That. All right. laughs> Don't worry. So, um, I started to look into this when I saw, I don't know if you, any of you have heard of Lisa Bevere. She's John Bevere's wife. She's written some books. She's written a book called Girls with Swords. Um, she's a really good writer. 
Um, she had written on this next slide. She had written this on. Um, oh no, I've skipped ahead. Right, so go back. I'll just tell you what. I'll go back next. I'll read this one first. Um, she had written a Facebook status and she said the church needs to worry less about all the people inside the ch outside the church for having sex and start worrying about all the people inside the church for not having sex. And I thought, yeah. <laughs> 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 Yeah, and I actually at that moment I just felt like I really want to look into this and research it and encourage people to have sex. <laughs> <laughs> so I know, but it's just, it was so impactful for me, that statement. Can you go back to the slide before? But also, I, I, I'm in your sense, I'm just basing everything in the Bible. I think when we grow up, or when, from, from our setup as families, uh, you find we grow up with mom and dad, and that way we, the things that learn, we learn from the Bible. I was, going to, I, I was teaching something and I said the first thing that every, every woman knows naturally is their father mm -hmm. or their uncle who they stay with. That's how they learn how many they act. So in my uh, presentation, in, for the next like 20 minutes, uh, it will be a dialogue we will be, we'll be communicating. But I wanted to give you a, a perspective of how you could understand it. You go to know that thing. Men are, we are different from women, we are. There's a marked difference there. Men are different from, from, from women. The first thing I want to say, let, let me just give you about the, 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 seven, uh, the seven phases of life that we go through. Number one, we, when, you are, when you are born as a child, there's a toddler, like you, you are in a phase called spills. Someone says spills. Spills. Just, just spilling everything, spilling everything. So it's a spills phase. So you are not worried about anything, you know, no nothing. You just, just it's, it's a kind of a childhood. It's just, it's, it's your space, it's your own space. They give you poetry, you spill. They give you milk, you spill. But he, life does not take you in a speedy place, it takes you to a dream. A dream, this is when you experience uh, we begin to instill values in that child. So that there's some discipline, there's some upbringing. So you find from speedy, then we spank you. <laughs> I know how to say it carefully because <laughs> I, I, know, I, I know to know what we do. But that dreams is when we try to instill values. So, then the child is growing up, we grow the child. Then from there we go to dreams, say dreams. Mm -hmm. So number one, say, say spews. Say dreams. So that does look this way. Now say dreams. <coughs> dreams is that you have moved from, you have been a toddler, you are growing up a bit, you are having this thing. Now you are growing into your, you know, your glorious face, which is your beautiful stage. Now this is dreams because you are full of energy. You can do anything. They don't have to tell you to do nothing. <laughs> you know it all. Yeah. You have all the answers. Mm -hmm. uh, in my dreams, age, I was doing karate, I was doing boxing. Because I was in the same door as a young man. I would run for two meters. You know, I would, I would do anything. I would feel like I can push the bus. I can do anything. And that's, that's one of the breaking points. Because then, if, if you have not been cultured well, with all the strength you can go haywire. But from things, life doesn't keep you things, it introduces you to bills. Just to show you that. <laughs> to show you that when you are driving, you must pay for them. But you're just driving, it's just the road. Pay for it. Cantor takes pay for it. School fees, you are given a loan to the finance, you have to pay back. That's bills, say bills. Yeah. So you just say spills. Views, views, views. That's because of so much views. Sort of your strength is taken, your pleasure. Now you are taken to ills. You get my pleasure. That attack you are. You, you, you are too to attack. <laughs> That's why they say it's out of attack. It's because you don't attack you. It's not saying, you know, when the way you think, you, the way that you don't sleep, you sleep, 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 sleep
I thank you. <laughs> From there, then we go to pews. Yeah. Obviously, we just to medication. Um, <laughs> I, 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 I never thought that in my life I would, I would take medication. So when the leader says he has diabetes, I said, ah, well. and it took me one year to accept it because I had grown up, you know, just with all my strength, with God's grace, which I didn't really realize. Thank God I spent most of my life saving God. Mm -hmm. Our pastor is, is, a, is a, you know, I think, in the age of, uh, is it? in the age. So, uh, then finally, you are taking the wheels, you have to write your wheel. Because <laughs> <laughs> you are about to exit. Amen. So let me give you expect. If you, you, you are growing up here, your son who is a, you know, your boy child, or you are married, or, or you intend to be married, or you have a friend, or you intend to have a friend, you are all, you, you are the right audience. We experienced the R retreat last year for the first time. I think it should be called the real retreat because people keep it real. You know, you get real stories from, you know, real people going through everyday real issues. Well, besides listening to my wife, uh, she was mm -hmm. one of the speakers as well. I enjoyed um, listening to the, uh, I think her name is Heather. Yeah. It's a very, very inspiring story and uh, it's very courageous of her to be able to share mm -hmm. such a very intimate story. Well, I'm a spiritual person and when I heard about it, I was a bit excited to come. I want to see the different speakers and it sort of motivate me. So that's one of the reasons why I'm here and I really enjoy myself to the fullest. I got something from every speaker actually. The one about couples, mm -hmm. the lady, she was quite, um, she was good at what she did mm -hmm. and it made me smile all the way. We were in Blackpool last year and we had a great time and it was a good time to network with other people and I just couldn't miss it. When we knew it was going to be around the corner from us, it was a great opportunity for us to come back and relaxing and networking and learning a lot of things. And well, I think I'll go with Penny. I quite like her talk on sex. She made it sound so simple. So I liked it. Very good. Well done, Penny. <laughs> um, I came to the first one in 2017. I met new people. We had fun. I was determined to return again in 2018. It's going to be Heather. She actually showed that you can pick yourself up even if the chips are down, whatever happens in life. She was very inspirational, very strong woman. Empowered by your speech really. The hotel has been this is really nice. It's mm -hmm. a nice environment. The rooms are brilliant. Mm -hmm. The bed is comfortable. And I think I'll be coming to this place again. Okay, I wanted to come to the retreat this year because I wanted to sit down and fellowship with um, with other people and also have the opportunity to learn from other people. There's so many things that we go through in life that sometimes we think we're the only ones going through it. So it's just sitting down in an atmosphere, having a platform where you can talk to people and be honest and open and raw about who you are as a person and also allowing yourself to be open to learn from other people. I've come away with so much knowledge, with such an insight into how relationships work, not just with your partners but with your friends, your family and just knowing about intimacy at um, such different levels. That's the experience that I was looking for and that's the experience that I got. Penny was the first speaker I heard and she was very powerful. She spoke in a way that I could relate to and it was just really everyday things that we experience in life and she really sort of gave me a lot to think about and I've come away from this really, really enriched and um, a message is something I won't, I won't forget. Awesome.